Bitcoin. Is it a real currency or is it just an exploit to sell more GPUs on the marketplace? Then we've got AMD. Their latest promotional video, was it a good idea or was it a bad idea? Jury's still out on that one. We've also got some interesting stuff about the new food pyramid. Say goodbye to those old high school charts and say hello to the new food plate this week in Viz. So this week's most popular story by far was a short write-up I did on Bitcoins and their use for GPGPU. Now if you're not familiar with Bitcoins, all you've got to do is hit Google and you'll find more than you ever cared to know. Essentially it's a new digital online peer-to-peer uh, -peer based currency that's entirely based on computational work. Previously this was done through a uh, CPU algorithm that they call mining, which is basically a brute force hash cracking algorithm. Uh, as the complexity grew, CPUs have become, you know, unusable basically and everybody's moved to GPUs. Well, I wanted to try it. I've still got the Quadro 5000 left over from the reviews that Nvidia gave me. Plus, I've got a couple of 285s laying around in the machine. Figured I'd try them out. Uh, I was able to eke out about 60 million hashes per second with my Nvidia cards. And I found that the Fermi-driven Quadro 5000 was actually a full 10% slower than the 285s. I can't explain it. The Fermi architecture alone should have beat the pants off the 285, but it didn't. Uh, now, if you go read the forums, you find that people are actually advocating use of the ATI and AMD cards, specifically the new higher-end Radeons, not the Fire Pros, but the Radeons. And they're, they're claiming the ability to hit 300, 400, 500, you know, upwards of 600 million hashes per second. That's 10x what I'm getting right now on Fermi cards. It's an interesting conclusion that shows that while NVIDIA may have been first to the game and their CUDA system is still the widest, most publicly available uh, GPU development platform out there, AMD still is a force to be reckoned with. They've really got some really high performance figures. If you're working with integer-based arithmetic, NVIDIA still has the floating and double precision support going for them, but that's really only needed in the extreme scientific space. So only time will tell what's going to happen with bitcoins and GPUs. Also this week, the uh, SIGGRAPH committee released their new uh, 2011 Emerging Technology Video Preview. There's some interesting stuff in there. A lot of it's, if you've ever been to SIGGRAPH and seen the Emerging Technology Showcase, they always have interesting stuff there to look at. But as you can see, if you watch the video, there seems to be less and less viz oriented and more and more human interface, computer interaction type exhibits. Not necessarily a bad thing, but seems to go more towards SIGGRAPH is getting away from Viz. Last year they had a big emphasis on uh, audio, and this year it seems they're going to have a big emphasis on human-computer interactions. So we'll just have to see what's going on with uh, the rest of the conference up in Vancouver this year. Now there was some big news this week out of both the AMD and the NVIDIA camps. We're going to start off with the AMD camp. Now I've been saying for a long time that Fusion was a big deal. Uh, Intel tried it with Larrabee and it didn't work for them, but I knew that was going to be the future face of things. And AMD's proving that I was right. They just released a press release this last week saying that they've managed to ship 5 million of the Fusion APUs already. And it's only been out a few months. This is massive. This is going to the desktop space, mobile space, embedded space. It's going everywhere. And it really is going to be the uh, next big thing. And you can see it already coming up with Intel Sandy Bridge. You can see NVIDIA trying to push it with Tegra. You can see everybody's trying to get on board with the integrated CPU, GPU, or APU, if you want to call it that. Also this week, in a somewhat entertaining spin, uh, several websites reported very briefly about an AMD marketing video called Good Idea, Bad Idea that showed, of course, uh, various people interested in upgrading their computers and taking the good idea of buying a nice low-priced, high-powered AMD Fire Pro card that could drive six displays with a reasonable amount of power rather than the uh, other unnamed vendor that was always shown with a green background that could only drive four displays with two graphics cards and cost $5,000 a piece and consume massive amounts of power. 
you don't have to think too hard to realize who they're talking about. And they brought up some good points. They also left out some points too. But the video was up for less than 24 hours before it was pulled. Uh, in fact, if you go around and you look on the internet, you'll see most of the stories I, that I originally found about it on Fire User and a couple of others have all vanished. Don't know what happened. Nobody from AMD's contacted me, so my story's still online. But the video, which was on YouTube, has been pulled. So, uh, you know, I have, I've got one or two screenshots. That's about it. Unfortunately, I didn't capture the video. And I'm sure if I did, I'd be getting a cease and desist any day now. So on the flip side, NVIDIA had a couple of uh, big announcements also coming out this last week. They first off announced that their 3D Vision Pro system was now going to work with YouTube. So YouTube doesn't have a tremendous amount of 3D content up, but they do have some. And now if you're a 3D Vision user, you can view all of the YouTube 3D content from the comfort of your own 3D Vision uh, capable computer. Then they took what I still think is well, I think it's a bad idea. They've released a new low-cost 3D Vision setup, which uses wired USB active shutter glasses. Now, it's still $99, making it probably one of the more expensive active, active shutter glass technologies out there. Uh, and it's wired through USB. So now not only do you get to stand around and wonder, you know, uh, why you have to wear glasses, but you also have to deal with a nice little cable dangling down the side of your face while you wear them. I, I can't imagine they're going to sell very many, especially when the price on them is still $99. But only time will tell. It does at least have the benefit of a uh, use in environments like internet cafes or lab environments, things like that, where you may have 20 or 30 people. Now, in that case, uh, trying to use their typical infrared glasses wouldn't work very well because everybody's displays would be syncing with the wrong ones and they'd be colliding and stuff. They have their 3D Vision Pro system, which solves that problem by switching to RF, but it's an even more expensive. It's three or $400. So this at least gets over that problem, but still, I just can't imagine many people are gonna to wanna to wear it with cables. NVIDIA also announced that uh, they're basically deferring GTC uh, 2011 and pushing it out to 2012. It's going to be out in California again, but they're doing this so that they can let this year basically focus on the international versions of the conference that are happening over in Asia and other countries. So uh, if you wanted to get something in there for GTC, it looks like you've got a little bit more time. So to get away from the uh, hardware news into some other stuff, this week the uh, USDA revealed the new food pyramid. Now, those of us in the U.S. are familiar with the old food uh, pyramid, and it's gone through a few different machinations over the last few years. Uh, last year's release was, in my opinion, a complete disaster. It really was a train wreck to look at. So they've gone back to the drawing board and started over with a new one. And I have to admit, the new one does look very pretty. It's no longer a pyramid, it's a food plate, uh, with the plate divided up similar to a pie chart, although it's not in wedges, it's actually in quadrants. Uh, showing the division of the five major food groups. It's a uh, good uh, exercise and simplistic design. It's very simple, very basic, not overwhelming. I actually think it's a nice improvement, especially over what we had last year. Uh, also on the VFX front this year, somewhat of a surprising news, Ascent Media and CIS Vancouver, uh, of course, Vancouver being the home of SIGGRAPH this year, uh, the two companies were actually owned by the same parent company over the last year, and they've decided to merge them into a new Method Studios. Now, they're going to maintain all of their international offices and all their staff. They've moved a few people around, but uh, they're still going to maintain pretty much exactly what they were before, just under a new name. So, we'll have to give them a little while, see how things shake out, but this really could be big for CIS, who's already really racked up a lot of credits in the last few years. Also, a new feature we're going to start in the uh, VizWorld podcast from here on out is the infographic of the week. So this week's infographic I chose is actually one that I really like about the rise and fall of Cisco. Of course, Cisco has long been known as uh, the home of the uh, high-end networking equipment. Over the last decade or so, they've tried to move more into the low end with their acquisition of Linksys and such, trying to branch out into more consumer space products, and then they had the flip. 
And of course, over the last month, I'm sure you've heard that the Flip finally died an unfortunate death. It's a real shame. It was a great little camera, great product, but when everyone's carrying an iPhone, what market is there for a pocket-sized video camera? Oh well. We'll just have to wait and see where Cisco decides to go next. But the infographic's really nice. It shows the history, some of the major events that have happened since the foundation of the company, and shows how they've grown and, you know, the sales have ebbed and flowed over time. Definitely want to go check it out. Got a thanks to uh, Tiago Veloso for posting that out in his daily viz. So be sure to go give him a shout out. Tell him he's doing a great job over at Visual Loop. So that concludes my return to the Viz World podcast. I hope you liked it. I'm going to try to make this a weekly affair. And keep checking back because I'm planning to have some big contests. I've got several posters laying around sent to me by various vendors uh, from various other infographics companies. So you might want to come check those out. Plus, I've got a couple of high-end NVIDIA Quadro cards I'm going to be raffling off here in the next few weeks. I've got a nice Quadro 5000 left over from the review, and they also sent me a previous generation Quadro card, both of which I'll be raffling off to a couple of lucky VizWorld subscribers. So subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the mailing list, subscribe to the RSS, come and comment on the website. Do everything you can to increase your chances of winning. Look forward to seeing you again next week.